we all have that moment where we want to know what processor our system has but when we do check the processor name it includes some confusing numbers and letters most of us do understand that i5 is better than i3 and i7 is better than i5 because higher number means newer and better product but what about the numbers and letters after that what do they really mean or intel is just throwing numbers at you for every different product so let's understand how does intel's naming scheme work So to start off, let's clear the misconception. In i3, i5, i7 and i9, the number next to i doesn't represent the number of cores it has. In fact, i3 has two cores and i5 in mobile version comes with two and in desktop version comes with four cores. They all have their differences, but we're not here to talk about differences between them, but rather what is the meaning of these names. So let's look at a processor to understand it better. This is Intel i9-9900K. In this, i9 is a brand modifier. Simply the higher the number is the better performance you have, sometimes even additional features. So moving forward, first number indicate the generation. So it's 9 gen processor and the last numbers are SKU. These are just numbers that keep increasing as some more processors are released in the same generation. One thing to note here is that in 10th gen, first two numbers indicate generation, not just the first number. And the letter at the last is known as suffix which most processors have and some don't. These indicate some features of processor which you may or may not want. So with this out of the way, let's talk about different suffix or letters that are used at the end. Starting with the most famous which is K. It means the processor is unlocked and can be overclocked, meaning you can increase the clock speed of a processor. But if you do overclock your processor, make sure you have better cooling to keep that extra heat away from your system. And your motherboard should also support overclocking for this to work. Next one is U, which is found in mobile devices. Simply means ultra low power. It will be power efficient, which will focus more on saving your battery life more than anything else. Y is another one we find, which means extremely low power. So it will consume less power even than U. Some Y CPUs even have TDP of 4.5 watts, which is extremely low. Then we have H. It stands for high performance. Your system will perform better and it will consume more power. And many of these age processors even have Q at the end, which does not mean high quality. Q simply means quad core. And sometimes we have K after H, which we already talked about. It means unlocked for overclocking. Then we have T, that is a desktop CPU. They are low power CPUs and are used in small form factor system or all in one PC. Next we have F. That means it doesn't have any onboard graphics. You'd need to buy a discrete GPU for this processor. So be on the lookout for these types of CPUs because who wouldn't want a GPU without having to buy one? Then there's X. It stands for extreme and usually used by high end users as it can go up to 18 cores. Then we have G. These processors include newer graphics technology and are designed for better graphics based usage. G processors also have a number next to them which indicates the level of graphics offered by processor. Higher numbers indicate higher graphics performance. One tip that I think would be useful is that for performance, you should never compare two processors that have different generations. These letters and numbers would mean something to you if you are comparing in the same generation. So I hope now you'd be able to make better decisions when next time you go to buy an Intel CPU. So this is it for this video and see you guys in the next one.